Welcome to an audiobook recitation of The Fastest Way to Your Next Personal Best, Running Power, by Hans van Dyck, Von van Megen, and Conde Hong. This is recited by Evan Schwartz at Stride. Forward. Years ago, coach and sports physician Guido Froman spoke enthusiastically about power measurement for runners. I wasn't very interested. I preferred to train mostly without equipment, and whenever I did want to use some sort of measuring device, I just used a basic heart rate monitor. With a heart rate monitor, I gained insight about my body and my heart rate instead of my output, my power. For that matter, I didn't believe you could accurately measure power in running. As a cyclist, I could somewhat imagine power output, but as a runner, it seemed unreliable and pointless. Until, that is, I bumped into data geeks Han van Dijk and Ron van Meegen, engineers who loved running and measuring running. The duo were very enthusiastic about Stride's running power meter, and it caught my attention. I tried to read their book, Running with Power, but it proved to be a challenge. As it turned out, the book is full of formulas, like T equals E over P equals MGH over P equals M times 9.81 times 100 over P equals 981 over P over M. Halfway through the first chapter, I set the book aside. Too complicated. I just wanted to run and to find out how to improve my 10 KPR, or how to run a full marathon and set a realistic goal time. I emailed Hans and Ron asking if they would like to get a cup of coffee, partially because their contagious enthusiasm for running by power made me curious about this new phenomenon, but I also wondered whether it was a good idea for me, historically a run-by-feel athlete, to run by power. Hans and Ron laughed when I complained about their book. Yes. We love formulas and calculations, admitted Hans. But you don't have to make it that complicated, Ron added. Running power is very simple, easier than running with a heart rate monitor. At first, I didn't believe them. But after two coffees, an orange juice, and a lengthy discussion of power, I wanted to try it. I followed the instructions Ron and Hans gave me and started training by power. And to my surprise, it brought a lot of peace to my training. Running by power does indeed appear to give more peace than running on heart rate. Peace? I didn't expect that. I thought that adding something else on top of heart rate, Strava, and GPS would be overwhelming. But it turns out that I now only have to pay attention to one thing. My power. My power fluctuates much less than my heart rate, and, to my surprise, it turns out to work really well. I've been consistently getting faster ever since I started to run with a power meter. In this book, Hans van Dyck, Ron van Meegen, and I write about the pros and cons of running by power. Users who have been training by power for some time share their experiences, and we'll discuss in detail the differences between training by heart rate, speed, or power. Initially, our goal was to write a book about running power in the general sense. We didn't want to write a refined brochure about Stride, the best-known power meter on the market, but gradually, we ended up with Stride. When it comes to running power, Stride is simply more reliable than anything offered by Polar, Garmin, or Koros. In the future, power meters that can compete with Stride will certainly enter the market. When that time comes, we'll add them to our book. This edition is mainly about Stride because they represent the current market leader and by a significant margin. With this book and a running power meter, training will be easier than ever. You don't need an expensive personal trainer, and you don't have to do an exercise test every quarter. With your stride, you can easily go full throttle once a month on your favorite short distance, and your data will automatically remain up-to-date and reliable. If you're running with stride, you have your coach on your shoe, and every session is automatically included in your training analysis. All you have to do is train with variety and enjoy your new PRs. In this book, I regularly draw on my own experiences. The knowledge and background about running by power comes mainly from Hans van Dyck and Ron van Meegen. We tried to write a book for runners who want to improve themselves, regardless of whether you want to run a 20 or 30 minute 5k, whether you train to race a 10k, or you run for general health. Running power is a valuable tool from the moment you decide to pursue greater fitness. I even suspect that within five years, running power will be more common than heart rate training is today. Not sure if running power is right for you? This book will help you find the answer to that. Do you have any questions, thoughts, or comments we didn't address in the book? Feel free to visit prorun.nl. That's P-R-O-R-U-N dot N-L. 
Have fun reading and running. Part 1. What is power exactly, and why should you measure it? What are watts? After many poor grades and frustrating struggles, I was happy to be able to drop physics in the ninth grade of high school. I'll take languages over the hard sciences any day. What I'm interested in, in addition to languages, is running. Making how to progress transparent, and finding ways to improve my sports performance. To train with power, you don't even need to know what a watt is. Even without knowing, you can improve personal records and make progress. For example, you don't need to know how the internet works to use it. If you know how to enter the URL for your favorite news website, you'll automatically see the news of the day, even without knowing how it's possible that you can access the internet from nearly any place in the world. It's exactly the same with wattage from your running power. You can work with it without knowledge of power itself and without knowledge of how said power is measured. As long as you know at what level of power you have to run in during a training session, or at what level of power you can run during a 5k, 10k, or a half or full marathon, you will make progress. If you're not interested in the background of watts and power, but you just want to do targeted training for your PR, you can skip part one of this book and go all the way to part two. There, we explain how you can use your power to improve your running performance. If you're not yet convinced of the usefulness of power training, it's instructive to know what power meters actually measure, how they do it, and what the differences are with heart rate measurement. A watt is a physical unit of measurement used to indicate power, which is the amount of energy consumed per second. Energy is represented by the unit joule. Calories may be something you're familiar with from food. Joules are simply an alternative way to represent energy. Let's take a look at some energy and power values that we may be familiar with. For example, a kilocalorie is equal to 4.184 kilojoules. Dietitians tell us that we consume roughly around 2,500 kilocalories per day, which corresponds to 10,460 kilojoules. In addition to kilocalories and kilojoules, we also recall energy consumption as kilowatt hours when tracking the use of electricity. One kilowatt hour equals 3,600 kilojoules. So we can say that the energy value of our daily food corresponds to 10,460 over 3,600, which is equal to 2.9 kilowatt hours. That's not much, especially when we consider that one kilowatt hour costs approximately 12 cents US dollars. If we were to eat electricity, we'd only need to pay 2.9 times 0.12, which is about 35 cents in US dollars to cover our needs each day. So, without talking about food and electricity, how do we make use of this knowledge? In his article appearing in Outside, author Alex Hutchinson nicely describes why we're all interested in calories, even if we just don't know it yet. Why should you care? It's a matter of terminology, says Hutchinson. If you do a sports performance test, having your VO2 max determined with advanced equipment, you're actually also measuring calories. Oxygen uptake is measured as it's a good measure of energy consumption. And if you use this data to determine your heart rate zones and where your anaerobic threshold is, then you can use your heart rate as a proxy for energy use. In other words, calories. And even for runners who run by feel, without a heart rate monitor, without a power meter, without a GPS watch, you could argue that they rely on their perception of how quickly they burn calories and how long they last. In short, knowing your use of calories plays a big role in your preparation for a new PR. When we run, a chain reaction of physical activity takes place. Our heart rate increases, our lung capacity is used to a greater extent, our muscles are switched on, and blood flow accelerates. You can think of the human body as a complex miracle, where 100,000 billion cells intelligently work together. But you can also represent the function of the human motor, the muscles, and the heart-lung function, which can deliver a certain power and a number expressed in watts. We all know that running takes energy. And it makes sense that it takes more energy to run a marathon as fast as possible than it does to run a 5-kilometer 
at your leisure. You can express the energy you use in kilojoules or K capital J. Watts are the number in which your energy consumption per second is expressed. You can imagine a runner as a machine that extracts energy from food and converts it into valuable fuels for running. There's one problem, though. No machine is perfectly efficient, and neither is your body. You never get as much energy from your body as you put into it. For example, a car is only 25% efficient. If your car has used 100 joules of gasoline energy, only 25 of these joules have been used to propel the car forward, while the remaining 75 joules have been converted to useless heat. Your muscles are also around 25% efficient, under normal circumstances. But that depends, among other things, on training, stride length, ground contact time, temperature, and more. Together with your weight, your energy consumption, and your power are therefore a golden combination to predict how fast you can run at certain distances. Because if you know how much power your body can deliver, you also know what your body can do to push your weight in a given direction at a certain speed. You can think of this simple phrase. Power is the amount of energy per second it takes to propel your body in a particular direction. Ron and Hans have created a clear model to describe running power. Your overall power is the power to move you forward, the power to resist air as you're moving forward, and the power to overcome any incline you might be climbing. This model might look simple, and we have a graphical illustration of this in the ebook that is available, but it's based on complicated formulas. For example, the air resistance depends on, among other things, wind speed, temperature, air pressure, your height above sea level, and your body size. You'll also notice that the air resistance is different when you walk alone or in a group, or where you're partially sheltered from the airflow. The Amsterdam Beach Marathon is the most famous half marathon in the Netherlands. You start on the beach near Amsterdam, and halfway, you turn off the beach back through the dunes. A very tough section, where the runners on the beach were facing strong winds, was an excellent opportunity for Hans and Ron to test their stride power meter in strong winds. A running friend of theirs, Niels, ran this section of the De Helven Eggman with stride, and the results were interesting. What happened? On the beach and running against the strong wind, it turned out that Niels had to deliver an average of 40 watts to overcome the wind while running. Delivering power peaks of more than 70 watts contributed solely from air resistance. Running with a constant power, you can imagine that your speed will be quite a lot slower if the wind alone requires an extra 40 watts to overcome. In this example, Niels ran consistently at 270 watts, a wattage that he knew he could sustain for a half marathon. His pace was 8 minutes and 5 seconds per mile in a strong headwind, and with the same power as compared to the pace he ran with a tailwind, which was 7 minutes a mile, a difference of 1 minute and 5 seconds per mile running into a headwind and with the tailwind. His runtime, 1 hour, 36 minutes and 28 seconds for the half marathon. By running with constant power, he knew exactly what to do in the strong wind. If he was measuring heart rate, this wouldn't have worked out nearly as well because heart rate always needs a little time to climb to a steady and reliable number. Running with pace would not have been possible at all because he would never have known how much slower he'd have to run against the headwind. This example clearly shows how running with power works well in strong winds and also on hilly terrain. The great thing about power is this. All these conditions can be captured in only one single number, your power. And if you know at what level of power you need to run to get better, you'll improve quickly. Altitude, wind, temperature, speed, heart rate, and air pressure, all of these variables affect the total time of an event. Of course, you can't constantly keep an eye on all these variables. When the weather gets warmer, or when you walk up a hill or a bridge, It affects your heart rate and pace. Should you mainly pay attention to your heart rate or pace? And in the warmer weather, is it better to run with a higher heart rate, a lower heart rate, or the same heart rate you run with in the cold weather? These questions are all difficult to answer. And during an event, it's too complicated to attempt to take all these variables into account. 
The big advantage of running with power is that you only have to keep an eye on this one simple to understand number that takes everything into account. Altitude, temperature, speed, wind, humidity, and air pressure. We have a great graph in the ebook version that shows all of these benefits of running with power and all these variables freely changing, and it shows how you can simply keep your power level at a constant number. The best part is that this predictor in this graph works accurately across all distances. So if you run three kilometers as fast as possible once, you get a very accurate picture of what's possible for a 10 kilometer race, half marathon, or full marathon. For example, if you look at wattage instead of speed, you'll also know exactly how much slower you'd have to run up against a hill or run into a headwind. Better yet, even downhill, you can see at exactly what level of power you should run at to keep your wattage at the right intensity. Power allows you to clearly see your progress regardless of whether you primarily run on a running track or in a forest or on a hill. Sure, this all sounds good, but doesn't heart rate measure your progression and capability of your body too? We'll get to that in part two of our audiobook. Thanks so much to tuning into part one, and you can be sure to check out part two coming out very shortly.